Hello everyone, my name is Ian Robinson, and this is Creative 111. Today, we're going to be talking about After Effects. And specifically, we're going to be talking about After Effects in terms of 3D, looking at some of the new features that were just released today, as well as some of the other 3D features that have been released over the last couple months. So let's get started by looking at our project. I'm going to jump into After Effects here, and in the timeline, you notice I have my US Travel Example timeline active, and I'll press the spacebar to begin playback. Here you'll notice I have some illustration layers that I've extruded or repositioned in 3D space. I didn't extrude them, I just repositioned them. And adding lights with shadows and a little bit of a flicker to the light added a little more interest, as well as a 3D camera where I'm creating that parallax effect where you can actually get a little bit more of a sense of depth. So we'll create all of this in just a minute. So I'll press the space bar to stop playback, and I just want to tell you really quickly where I found this image. If you actually go to the United States Library of Congress, they have a whole section of images you can use in the free to use and reuse sets. So I browsed through there to actually find travel posters, and I found this one. Now, in the lower right corner, I could choose what size file I'd like to download, and just in general, when you're positioning layers in 3D space, you want to keep as much information as humanly possible. So I went ahead and downloaded the large 57 meg TIFF file. That way, when the camera moves in on the layers, I'm not necessarily losing any image quality. Now, as you can see, I didn't really do much of a camera move. I did more of an orbit around, but regardless, um, it's nice to have the extra information. All right, so let's get back into After Effects. In After Effects, I have a US Travel Start composition, which I'll open, and you'll notice I have several layers in my project. Now, I'm just gonna click through some of the layers and enable Solo so you can see these are different elements that I have cut out from the illustration so that I can reposition them in 3D space, okay? And the background here, you notice I not only removed those elements, but I filled them in with other graphics. And the way I did that was in Photoshop using Content-Aware Fill. All right, this isn't a Photoshop tutorial, so I'm not gonna dive into that, but Let's work on positioning these elements in 3D space. In order to do that, I need to decide exactly which layers need to be 3D. So I'm gonna select layers three through seven just by clicking and shift clicking. And then I'll go here to my column and I'll enable 3D. If you're not seeing these columns, you wanna to toggle the switches and modes until you see these columns. Now notice when I enable 3D for all of these layers, I get these 3D transform controls, which are great. This is called the gizmo, okay? And the gizmo allows you to control these layers using different handles. Now in a little bit, I'm gonna show you how to have different looking gizmos to control different parts of the layers. But for right now, I wanna continue down this positioning rabbit hole, okay? So if you look in the toolbar here for the composition panel, you'll notice this has been revised. Now, the version of After Effects I'm running is the beta version. In order to have some of these features, you need to make sure you're running at least After Effects version 18, which as of today is in the beta version, which is a public beta. It's in your Creative Cloud desktop application. Just go under betas and you'll be able to see After Effects and you can download it there. So notice I have this really cool thing called Draft 3D. When I'm positioning layers, I usually always have that enabled. What this allows you to do is actually manipulate your layers in 3D space and not slow down things on your computer trying to refresh shadows and lights and all kinds of other things. It's not designed for rendering, it's only designed for while you're working with the layers. Okay, so I have Draft 3D enabled, and right next to it I have this other thing called a 3D ground plane. But you notice I'm not seeing that. In order to see the ground plane, I need to change my view. So notice now here in the toolbar, I actually can change my renderer if I wanted to use 
true extruded 3D layers, I could use the Cinema 4D renderer, but I don't need to do that in this instance, so I'll leave it Classic 3D. I'll come to the next drop down here, and this is where I'm going to choose Custom View 1. This view actually allows me to kind of view things as though I were up in the rafters on the side of a stage, and I can look down and see where everything is in 3D space. So notice if I toggle the ground plane, you can see it going on and off, okay? Now, I want to reposition this foreground layer. So I'll select it, and I'll just grab the gizmo here. And when you hover over the Z arrow, you'll see a little icon that says Z. And I can click and drag. And as I'm moving this, I can see where it is in relation to the grid. And you can see, since the grid is kind of in the middle of the composition, and those layers are positioned in the middle of the composition, I'm only seeing uh, the top part of the layer. Uh, the rest of it is kind of underneath things here. Now, how can I see it more clearly? Well, I can use the keyboard shortcuts 4, 5, and 6, or I can use the keyboard shortcuts 1, 2, and 3. So what I'll do is press V on my keyboard to make sure I have the original gizmo set up. And I'm gonna press one on my keyboard. And this is my orbit around tool. So if I click and drag, it's gonna orbit around wherever I start clicking and dragging. So here you can really see the parallax and where things are positioned in 3D space. Okay? Now, I just wanna press Control Z to undo those last little things here. I'm gonna press V to grab my selection tool, and I'll reposition this in 3D space. And I'm gonna hold down Shift as I drag, and I wanna position this out about 250 pixels on the Z axis. Now, if I press two on my keyboard, this will allow me to pan around in the scene, and if I press three on the keyboard, I can dolly in and I can dolly out. Now what's cool when you dolly in to the grid, notice now I can more clearly see exactly where that layer is positioned in 3D space. So I'll press V to grab my selection tool and I'll drag on the Z axis. And here, now you can more clearly see where this layer is popping through and as I reposition it, where it is on the grid. So the grid will dynamically update as you position any layer in 3D space. And if I hold down shift, it's gonna make sure to move things in 10 pixel increments. But you know what? I'm just gonna select that layer and press P and I'll make sure it's at minus 250 on the Z axis so I know that's positioned correctly. All right, let me go ahead and reposition the other layers. And in order to do that, I'm gonna switch from custom view to the top view, okay? The top view, has no depth whatsoever. This is called an orthogonal view. And what it allows me to do is just select individual layers and reposition them. So I have that foreground layer out. Um, and just to better see how things look, I'm gonna change this view to two views. And I'll click on the left side here and that's already set to the top view. I'll click on the right side here and I'll make sure this is set back to the active camera. So I need to reposition the people. I'll select the people and hover over the Z axis handle and I'll just drag them so they're a little closer to the foreground, but I don't want them in front of the foreground. And again, I'm gonna hold down shift as I move. So I want those to be right around 200, maybe 210 pixels on the Z axis. If I click in an empty area here, I can deselect those layers and I can see it's looking pretty good. Let me select the column and I'll go ahead and move that. Now, uh, I just wanna position the column a little bit forward, so I'll position it maybe 50 pixels forward because it's a pretty large element, okay? Now, this spire is this little element right here, and I know there isn't much contrast off the background, but that's okay. Um, we're gonna get that with lights and shadows. So I'll select the background here, and I wanna move that back. So I'll drag on the Z axis, and I'm gonna hold down Shift, and I'll position this about 200, Actually, you know what, I'll position it maybe 300 pixels back in the scene. So I have a fair amount of space between all these elements. And actually, you know what, no, I'm actually gonna position this uh, a little closer like that. So it's actually 160 pixels back on the Z axis. I can see that uh, to the left of my cursor. 
Okay? So, now let's go back uh, to one view. There we go. And I want to select this view, and I'm going to press Shift forward slash to make sure I'm seeing absolutely everything in that comp. And you can also press the comma key to zoom out just to make sure. And this background here is right on the edge of visibility. If I drag on the y-axis, you can see it's going to kind of uh, show black behind that, which I don't necessarily want. So I want to scale this. And usually I press S and scale in the timeline, but I want to show you what happens if you press 5 on your keyboard. That opens up the scale parameter here for my 3D layer. So I can hover over this X, Y parameter, and I can scrub, and it's going to allow me to scrub along the X or scrub along the Y. And if I hold down Shift as I scrub, it will keep things in proportion, okay? So that allows me to scale things. If I press uh, 4, this will allow me to reposition things along individual planes, so I can position it freely on the X, Y axis, on the X, Z axis, um, on the Y, Z axis. You get the general idea, okay? I can do the same thing for rotation. If I press 6 on my keyboard, that opens up my rotation, okay? Now, I'll just go ahead and press V to grab my selection tool, and that'll give me my basic gizmo controls again. And I know I'm zoomed out here, so I'll press Shift forward slash just so things are a little bit better in the scene. Now, to add more depth, I'm going to add a light. So I'll go up under Layer and choose New Light. Okay? And I want to choose a point light. I'll leave the color set to white. I'll set the intensity to 90. I don't want there to be any fall off, meaning the light's just going to continue emanating out. But I do want there to be shadows, so I'll make sure that's enabled. And the darkness of the shadow is going to be 55%, and the diffusion will be 35 pixels. And I'll click OK. All right? So that looks pretty good, but if you notice how the illustration's drawn, there's light coming from the upper right. So I'm going to drag on the Y axis of the gizmo to move this up, and I'm going to drag on the X axis to move it to the right. And now I can hover over the Z axis, and as I drag, I can move it closer or further back. I want to move it further back, and I'm just free, uh, I'm just free positioning this to kind of guess where it is. Feel free to move yours wherever you like, okay? So that's one light. Uh, and you notice shadows were enabled, but I'm not seeing any shadows here. I need to select the layers where I'd like the shadows to be visible. So I'm going to come down. So I'm going to come down here in the timeline. Excuse me, and I'll select all those layers, and I'll press A A on my keyboard, the letter A twice rapidly. A A, okay, and then I'll enable cast shadows. So when I do that, you're not going to notice a difference. And that's because Draft 3D is enabled. Notice when I was moving these layers, the system wasn't slowing down or anything like that. Well, Draft 3D also disables things like shadows. So if I want to see those shadows, I want to turn Draft 3D off. And boom, now I can see those shadows. But since I have a bunch of layers selected, I can't really see them very clearly. So there we go. Now you can see the shadows that are in my project. They're kind of dark. Um, so I want to lighten that up by adding another light. I'll go up under Layer and choose New Light. Okay? And for this one, I'll disable Cast Shadows, and I'll set the intensity down to something like 50, and I'll click OK. And that's going to brighten up the scene considerably. And I'll just move this light down uh, and to the left, again, just using those axis handles. And the reason I'm doing that is I want a little bit more light around where these uh, people are. I can also select the light in the timeline and press P, and I can scrub on the Z parameter if I want to move that back just a little bit like so. All right. So if I turn the visibility of point light 1 off and on, you can see how drastic a difference that actually is in the scene. Now, let's go ahead and do that camera move. I'd usually add a camera into the scene, but I want to show you another feature today. Okay, so what I'll do is go ahead and grab my orbit around tool. So I'll go up in my timeline here and I can press one on my keyboard. And I'll just click and drag to orbit around. And I want to orbit around to the side kind of like so. 
Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, and I'll collapse my foreground here. There we go. And this is where I want my camera to start. So I'll go up under layer and I'll choose new. And you know what? I actually want to I want to add the camera into the scene um, based on the view. And to actually do that, it's not under the layer menu. It's under view and say, create camera from 3D view. So when I do that, now notice the view hasn't changed at all, but the camera is in the timeline. And if I double click on the camera here, you can see it is a two node camera, okay? Which is exactly what I want. So I'll click okay. And I'm gonna press the P key to open up the position of this camera. And I'll go ahead and add a keyframe. And then I want to come to about five seconds in the timeline here, and I want to orbit again to kind of reposition things. So when I do that, notice the camera is actually moving. So if I want to make sure that I'm not actually moving up and down, I can hold down shift as I drag and make sure to snap it along the X axis. So I'll go ahead and reposition it like so. And I'm going to press N is in Nancy, but more specifically is an end to set the end of my work area here because I only want to animate the first five seconds. Now I'll press the space bar here and you'll see I've actually got somewhat of an animation, but you notice it's woefully slow. And that's because I have shadows enabled and lights on. And if I just want to see the camera move quickly, I can press the space bar to stop having those frames loaded into my cache. And I can just enable Draft 3D and go back to the beginning here and press the space bar. And now you can see I'm actually starting to get a real-time preview of that camera move. Now, am I seeing the shadows? No. But is this a faster way to work? Heck yes, it is. All right? So... I like this general camera move, uh, but since these keyframes are linear, I'm going to click on the word position. So both those keyframes are selected, and then I'll press F9 on my keyboard to make sure that I have um, those keys actually uh, adjusting. But unfortunately, F9 isn't working for me uh, right now because I have the screen recording application going and some other things. So I'm going to right click here and just go to my keyframe assistant and choose easy ease. Okay, great. So now when I go back and press the space bar here, you can see I've got a little bit of an ease into the move. So it speeds up and it slows down. Now, of course, I could make this seamless and have it kind of bounce back the other way by copying this first keyframe and pasting it down there. But I think you get the general idea. The most important thing I wanted you to understand with this project were some of the new features like Draft 3D, which is amazingly fast, and the new 3D ground plane, which helps you really kind of keep your perspective as to where things are when you're moving things around in your projects. Now, before I finally go, I'm going to turn off Draft 3D and go back to the beginning and I'll press the space bar here and it's going to go ahead and just load up those frames into my cache. So it's going to take a hot second for it to actually show me a preview of this move with the lights and the shadows. But once all those frames are cached, it'll go ahead and play back in real time. So. Please, if you enjoyed this video, uh, please feel free to subscribe. I'm going to be making sure to add new videos every single week. So you'll see stuff from me. You'll see stuff from our other instructors. Uh, you'll see stuff uh, from Nick and Lee and other uh, great people. So please feel free to uh, tune in whenever you get the chance. And ta-da, there it is. You can see the move that we've created and reposition the layers using the latest uh, tools available in Adobe After Effects. Have a good one.